What's going on on my YouTube videos? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And welcome to another installment in my Universal Classic Monster series. Today's review, I'm taking a look at the 1942 sequel, The Ghost of Frankenstein. The Ghost of Frankenstein was released in 1942. It was the fourth installment in the Frankenstein franchise in the Monster series. And this is a first for the Frankenstein franchise. This is the first Frankenstein movie not to star Boris Karloff as the Frankenstein monster having previously played him in the previous three films. Sadly, Boris Karloff did not reprise his role. Bela Gose reprises role as Igor, so that's a bit of a plus. So what do I think of The Ghost of Frankenstein without Boris Karloff? Is the movie any good? Does the movie suffer because of his absence? Or is it in the middle of the road? Let's find out together. So in The Ghost of Frankenstein, a mad doctor plans to transplant Igor's brain into the body of Frankenstein's monster so that they together can rule the world. And this movie stars Cedric Hardwick, Bela Lugosi and Lon Chaney Jr. taking over Boris Karloff's role as the Frankenstein monster. So as a whole, I do enjoy the Frankenstein franchise. I love Boris Karloff's stamp as the Frankenstein monster, especially in the first two movies, Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein. Those two movies directed by James Whale are among the best films in the Universal Monster series. The franchise did take a step backwards, in my opinion, with Son of Frankenstein. I didn't think that movie worked on a story level, especially with it being Boris Karloff's last film. I think it took a lot of steps backwards with the character and how it handled some things, and I am still incredibly disappointed by that film. I was a little skeptical on Ghost of Frankenstein because Boris Karloff's not playing the character anymore. You have a different actor this time, Lon Chaney Jr. And it made sense to cast him because he was fresh off the success of The Wolfman. And I thought he was pretty good as The Wolfman, so it's quite interesting seeing how he would handle this character. Also, the movie could have been another rehash type movie because it's another son of the original Frankenstein. Apparently it's the brother of Basil Rathbone's character in Son of Frankenstein, the character Cecil Hardwick plays, who lives in another village and he wants nothing to do with the Frankenstein legacy until the Frankenstein monster comes back and ends up in his turf. So this could have easily been a rehash and I wasn't sure how this movie was going to go, but this movie has a few things going for it. At <gasps> This movie does have a few things going for it that actually I did enjoy this movie over Son of Frankenstein. Uh, one of them is Bela Lugosi reprising his role as Igor. I enjoyed Igor in Son of Frankenstein. He was one of the few bright spots of that film. And Bela Lugosi did another great job once again as the slimy assistant to Frankenstein. I thought he continually hand up his performance, and I think he gave a better performance in this movie than in Son of Frankenstein. I thought he mixed the camp and the terror of his character so well. I think the movie focused on him a lot as he wanted to revive his friend very well, that he loves hanging out with the Frankenstein monster, that that dynamic was established in Son, and he wants to do all he can for the character, and that's why he's so determined to put his brain into the brain of the monster because he thinks that's the best way to, to keep the character going. And I love that idea, having Igor in the brain of the monster is just pretty awesome. Uh, there's other things I like about this too. Uh, Lon Chaney Jr. I was really surprised at, by his performance as the monster. No, he's no Boris Karloff. He's not even close to matching. Boris Karloff's iconic turn, but he does a good enough job in the role. There's a few parts where I actually was impressed by what he was able to do with the character. He's still just as ruthless as ever. There's a couple scenes where I'm like, man, what? some of these kills are actually kind of brutal for the time, I guess. But at the same time, it, 
it kind of harkens, a part of the story kind of harkens back to issues I have with Son of Frankenstein. I loved Bride of Frankenstein because they expanded more on the human element of the monster and they try to ma make him more of a sympathetic figure. And I feel like Son of Frankenstein took many steps backwards and made him more of like a mute, brainwashed puppet type figure and I didn't enjoy that too well. Son kind of was in the middle because you had the whole thing with Igor going into his brain and Igor being the mind of the monster near the end but then it earlier he's also kind of mute and he's kind of a puppet and he doesn't he gets controlled by Igor playing a horn oh that was what was that all about but there's other things about it I like in this film like the monster has this fascination with a little girl who is the only one who befriends the monster in this village and that dynamic a little creepy but it is kind of sweet that she's the only one that doesn't see him as a monster but his psychopathic tendencies get in the way of that and that was a dynamic I did enjoy and I wish it was part of the movie a little more. Uh, Cedar Cardwick as the other son of Frankenstein. I thought he was okay. I don't think he's near as compelling as Colin Clive in the original or what Basil Rathbone attempted to do in Son of Frankenstein, but again, Cecil Harwick is good enough in the role, and I still enjoyed seeing where they went with his character, even if it does feel like a clone of the other Son of Frankenstein that Basil Rathbone played in the last film. There's one other thing that I thought was really weird in this movie. It's The movie's called The Ghost of Frankenstein, and the whole time I was wondering what that really was, and midway into the film there's a scene where literally the ghost of Henry Frankenstein comes in the form of a ghost, I guess this inspired Force Ghost in Star Wars, to talk to his son about why he created the monster. And that was one of the silliest things I ever saw. I was not too overly crazy about that sequence, if I'm being honest. Also, I think the whole idea of Igor's brain going into the monster, I love that idea, but they do very little with it because once they dive into that, the movie's about over. And Universal's classic monster films are notorious for rushing their endings up to get a conclusion. And... This is another movie that I think suffers because of that. I wanted to see more of Igor's brain in the monster. I, I would have loved that. That would have been awesome, but no, that didn't really happen. And the movie kind of ends on a whimper. So I'm pretty much all over the place on Son of Frankenstein. There are some interesting ideas in this film. There's some great ideas, like Igor's brain going into the monster. I did enjoy Bela Lugosi, especially as Igor. I thought he was the best, single-handedly the best thing about this film. Lon Chaney does a solid job as the monster. I did enjoy some of the ideas, even though some aspects are a bit recycled from previous films, but I do think this is a more entertaining film than Son of Frankenstein. I, I don't think it had the issues I had with Son of Frankenstein near as much. and. I thought this was a watchable Frankenstein entry. There's a lot of aspects I think that could have been done a lot better. I just think these sequels post Bride are missing the human element that made Bride of Frankenstein so excellent. And it is a little frustrating that they've kind of moved in a more sillier direction. But hopefully some of these other Frankenstein films will at least be watchable. And this one is watchable. I just think this movie could have been a lot better, especially in the execution of some of its themes. So at the end of the day, I am going to give Ghost of Frankenstein a 3 out of 5 stars, and on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 52 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Ghost of Frankenstein as part of my Universal Classic Monster series. If you're new to this series, I bought this collection a while ago of all of the classic movies in the Universal Monster series, 30 of them to be exact, released from 1931 all the way to 1956. Really cool little collection which has separate Blu-ray discs of all of the separate 
films in each respective franchise, like all the Frankenstein films are on there, the Wolfman, Dracula, the Mummy, Invisible Man, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Phantom of the Opera is also on here, and it has all the crossover films as well, including the ones with Abbott and Costello. I've been having a ball reviewing all these movies, especially as a big movie fan, and I love talking about franchises on this channel. This was the first big movie franchise in Hollywood, so I felt it would be neat to review all these old black and white monster films that helped shape the horror genre and spawn the modern day blockbuster franchise. So. I'm having a great time with these films. If you're a fan of these old school movies, I'll leave a link in the description below for a playlist of all the Universal Monster films I've done so far. At the time of this video, I reviewed Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, The Invisible Man, Bride of Frankenstein, Werewolf of London, Dracula's Daughter, Son of Frankenstein, The Invisible Man Returns, The Mummy's Hand, The Invisible Woman, and The Wolfman. Definitely click the link in the description below if you want to catch up on all my past videos and don't forget to click the subscribe button and notification bell to be notified of future videos. Join me next time in my series of Universal Classic Monster Reviews. I'll be looking at the 1942 film Invisible Agent, another Invisible Man film. Curious about that one is the last Invisible Man film was a screwball comedy. What are they going to do this time? Find out in my next review, which is coming to this channel very, very soon. But if you've seen The Ghost of Frankenstein, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button to see more content, and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, music reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!